Welcome back to the Biblical Counseling Podcast. My name is Jeff Christensen, your host. As you've noticed, we've taken a little bit of a break over the summer, but we are ramping back up. And I sure missed you guys and your comments and your, uh, your, you know, your interaction with the podcast. And so continue to reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Romans 15, 14, what we're going to talk about a bit today is who is to do counseling? Who is the biblical counselor? Who should that person be? Well, Romans 15, 14 is a good starting point. Who is due to counseling? Now, I myself, Paul said, am confident concerning you, my brethren. So he's speaking to believers. Uh, Paul is exhorting, encouraging, admonishing believers in, in all of the book of Romans. And here, specifically, he's talking to the brethren, brothers and sisters, people of God. I myself am confident concerning you that you're full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. You know, every believer in the general sense is called to the uh, the ministry of counsel. Um, the Williams translation would say it this way, as far as I am concerned about you, my brothers, I am convinced that you're especially abounding in the highest goodness, richly supplied with perfect knowledge, and competent to counsel one another, where, whereas the New King James puts it, able to admonish one another, the word admonish can be one of our great New Testament words translated to counsel or counseling. And, you know, some people like to say uh, that, uh, that, you know, counseling is for the experts or so forth, in the body of Christ, we need to refer people out of the church to the experts that have been oh studied and, and have degrees in that arena. However, Paul would say it differently that if you are uh, especially abounding in highest goodness, that means you're born again. You have the Holy Spirit indwelling you. You have the illuminating work of the Holy Spirit to read the scriptures and not only understand, but receive and walk in uh, the perfect knowledge of the word of God. And you're competent, therefore, to counsel one another, one to the other, the other to the one. This one another ministry is counseling. And so every believer generally, from the garden variety believer to the seminary professor to the children's pastor to the um, to the, the usher in the church and to just the good godly men working a job, living life at home and the, the uh, you know, the men and women of the people of God um, is to be involved in the counseling ministry. Bottom line, everybody. You know, and if the body of Christ was doing its work, there would not be need necessarily for these parachurch ministries that are popping up all over the place trying to fill the gaps. And, you know, ours is one of them. You know, the Biblical Counseling Academy is a parachurch ministry. It's under the umbrella of the local church. Nevertheless, uh, it would be uh, reaching out to the body of Christ worldwide. We have an international reach. We equip counselors for the local church. We're not trying to uh, take the role of the local church. We're just trying to come alongside and help people get uh, certified, equipped, those that are called. Um, Colossians 3.16 uses the, the same uh, phrase, admonishing one another. That's that Greek word, nuthateo, or that verb um, that can be rendered or translated counseling. And uh, the word brethren is to all the brothers and sisters in the family of God. So in this passage of Scripture, it's for every Christian in any New Testament church found throughout any church age, throughout the history of the church, all believers in general are called to counsel. 
And I, I like to add Matthew 28 and say we're called to make disciples. And counseling is just a, a flavor of, of uh, discipleship. Counseling is discipleship. It, it may be targeted and in-depth and, and, and have a specific focus. Nevertheless, uh, it should be clearly under the umbrella of uh, sanctification and discipleship. So are you, listener, are you competent to counsel one another? Romans fifteen fourteen speaks directly, able also to admonish one another, or as the Williams translation of the New Testament, competent to counsel one another. Dr. J. Adams took the title or the title of his uh, classic book on biblical counseling called Competent to Counsel, published in 1970, uh, used this phrase to write uh, or to write his title of his book. And I believe, based on Romans 15, 14, God pronounces you and me and all believers potentially capable of giving godly counsel to one another. It's a one another ministry throughout the New Testament. You look, you just Google that phrase. Don't Google it. Maybe use your Bible software and quote unquote one another and find it in your translation. It's beautiful passages that are one another. But Romans really proclaims the person and the work and and uh, the the provisions of the Lord Jesus Christ and believers that grow in the goodness of the Lord and the knowledge of God are increasingly and practically those that are competent to counsel. So you can't become you can't declare yourself competent to make disciples if you're not a disciple, if you're not following Jesus. So you have a potential and that's why I like to say those that I counsel, I really exhort them at the beginning. Hey, if you find victory, if you find transformation, if God brings a, uh, you know, a flourishing to your life based on biblical counsel, will you commit to counseling others? It's a multiplication of discipleship, of making disciples. So I, I like to say that to people that are that grow or mature or are sanctified throughout the counseling process. And a lot of us, a lot of you, a lot of uh, those that do counseling have received good godly counsel. You know, I've received lots of counsel and guidance and direction from godly men and women for the ministry. And so I want to pass that on to others. And so the competency, though, doesn't come from just being a scholar. It comes from having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in the indwelling work of the Holy Spirit. It comes from being available, yielding to his working. Because, you know, any secular person and even a maybe even a proud, arrogant, carnal, you know, knowledge puffs up. In other words, you could be born again and you could be puffed up in knowledge because you know the Bible and you know it really well. But, well, the, you know, Satan and his minions know the Bible, too. Anybody can read. But the difference is where it's embraced, it's walked in. And when it's embraced and walked in and received, uh, there's going to be humility involved. So somebody that just has a puffed up knowledge of the Bible, uh, you know, why not have both? A, a knowledge of the Bible and humility. And so um, many people are going to balk or push back or disagree that this competency in counseling is available to you and me that are less uh, inclined to having a degree in psychology or understanding and, uh, you know, Im implementing psychotherapy. And yet, this informal approach to helping one another is sufficient according to the Word of God. And, you know, they'll say, yeah, for minor needs, that's true. But for more hard cases, complicated, complex needs, 
and I hear this within the movement of biblical counselors. Uh, there's a trend right now that you need to be um, clinically informed, and there's nothing wrong with understanding diagnosis, you know, somebody's borderline personality disorder and understanding what that means in the DSM and the description. Hey, they might have some good descriptions, but nevertheless, is that necessary to make disciples, to counsel? I don't think so. There's nowhere in this passage or in the scriptures that you can convince me that I need to be competent in the in the philosophies of the world. And usually it, it has a detrimental effect because it does have an influence on my worldview if I'm reading and then begin to embrace these uh, theories from from the secular uh, point of view on, you know, being trauma-informed or, you know, those kind of matters where I'm spending more time studying the psychology than the Word of God. The more I'm in the Word of God, there's more power. There's power in the Word. There's not power in man's Word, but there's power in God's Word. You know, there is a saying in the church that says this. Let me quote from Bob Hoekstra. And he writes this. He says, We must always be prepared to send the difficult counseling cases to the psych psychologically trained experts. Now, so he's quoting the um, objections. He's quoting the those that believe the Word of God needs help. He's quoting somebody else. But this is out of uh, the... You know, this whole uh, podcast is an excerpt of How to Counsel God's Way curriculum by Bob Hoekstra, which has been passed on to me as he's passed on to heaven. He said, here, take this curriculum and teach others as I have taught you. And that's what I'm using. And so I'm reading this uh, quote that he says is very common among the Christians, and I hear it all the time. So I'm in agreement and I kind of rephrase things a bit from time to time. But he says that there are people out there that will say this. We must always be prepared to send the difficult counseling cases to the psychologically trained experts since they are the only ones who fully understand man and can thereby, thereby deal effectively with complex problems. And I think, uh, that, well, of course, we need to send tough cases to the experts. But from God's vantage point, the true experts are right here in the family of God, the body of Christ, not those who are trained in in psychology or in man's wisdom, hoping to understand man by studying human theories about man. And that's where I push back against the the um, uh, the latest trend in the biblical counseling movement uh, concerning these things, such as being clinically informed or psychologically informed or having a, uh, a, a season of study in the, in the uh, secular realm. Uh, I, I disagree. I'm just going to be forthright and bold about it. I disagree, you know, and I'm going to push back hard in future uh, podcasts and so forth. But nevertheless, just giving it to you straight that the ones that God gifts, equips, and raises up are in the church. Romans 12, 6 and 8. Having then gifts differing according to the grace God given to us, he who exhorts an exhortation. I believe verse 6, he who exhorts an exhortation, in that context pertains to spiritual gifts, and it's somebody that has a supernatural added grace poured out upon them and God is imparting spiritual gifts and these are like divine enablings of the Holy Spirit where people function effectively and what God has in mind for each individual to serve the body of Christ. That's a built-in expert in the body of Christ. And I think verse 8, one of those gifts is exhortation. And I think it's uh, a word that can be used for counseling. It's parakaleo. It's the coming alongside ministry. It could be translated counseling. Or it would include 
the spiritual gifting of counsel. And so I think everybody generally counsels one another, but some people have a spiritual gifting from God that includes that parakaleo exhortation coming alongside and they have a they're in the body of Christ God's in his sovereignty gifted to provide spiritual counsel maybe distinctively proficiently and they become God's experts in the family of God in the local church yeah we all need counsel i need it you need it it isn't just for the outlying troubled folks, I need counsel. And there's a safety in a multitude of counselors. But I give counsel, but from for some, it'll be primary in their ministry. And that's you who are listening. You're supernatural, gifted by God to function in this capacity. Because you're maturing in this area. And that's the people that God We'll use. Hey, hope this was helpful to you. I'm just introducing a new series in the Biblical Counseling Academy and wanted to get this podcast out and published. Some of you were asking, hey, you know, where's my where's my podcast? I, I miss it. Well, I'm here and we're in the middle of a relocation for the ministry where we're going to strengthen the Biblical Counseling Academy and we're partnering uh, with uh, local church, lo- local churches. We're under the umbrella of a local church, and we're doing this to strengthen uh, churches across the country, around the world. The academy is growing, and I appreciate your prayers. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye for now.